Hey folks, how you guys doing? Everybody good? So, good evening everyone. Um, thanks to a couple of my colleagues, Alan Joe and Alden Woman McGinnis, and of course you guys know Chief Sikorsky. So, here to just announce um, that, you know, many people have seen, you guys included in our community, uh, a decent increase in violent crime, especially gun crime. We've been talking about it a while. We've been committed from a resource side to give the police tools, but um, because we've seen this large increase in crime, I hear from residents all the time, they're concerned about this, especially the shots fired gun crime, you guys report on it, right? So we read the headlines, we see this, we see it in our neighborhoods, So, and, and many people are personally affected uh, by this, and quite frankly, us and everybody, the community is frustrated with this gun crime stuff. So the level of violence is not unique to Davenport. It's nationwide. It's all over. Uh, but we're going to try and see what we can do. So uh, communities of similar sizes are facing the same increase in violent crime, especially gun crimes, right? And we're not immune to that. Uh, Cedar Rapids, Des Moines, Waterloo, Davenport, we're all facing the same type of challenges. One thing I hear consistently is, what are the police doing about the crime? Let me say this as straightforward as I can say to everybody looking on their cameras and all you guys that are uh, all your viewers. Um, these guys, the poli our police department, our officers get after these crimes as, as best as we could ever think of. They find them, they do the investigations, they arrest, but they can't do it by themselves. Um, every day these folks are going out, leaving their families, and, and taking on uh, some of these people that are using guns to commit crimes in our community. They work tirelessly to arrest the violent offenders, and we thank them for that. And they're going to keep doing the job, and we're going to keep pushing them hard, and they're going to keep doing what they do. But we need to do, we, our community, us, need to do more. Okay? So our community's police, quite frankly, basically, uh, the sole burden of doing this on Chief Sikorsky and his officers. We need to be part of the solution now. Right? And so... While law enforcement is a piece of this dealing with the rising levels of crime, they're not and should not be the only people to look for answers. Law enforcement has a responsibility of dealing with crime after it's occurred. Our community is, should be very responsible in helping to prevent crime before it occurs. And to be able to do that, we must first understand what type of crime is going on. We understand gun guns. We understand shootings. But what's going on? What do we not know? What are we missing? So I'm going to let Chief talk a little bit about his thoughts, and then I'm going to finish up with a bunch of stuff, and then I'll take some questions if you want to do that. So, Chief. Thanks, man. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my role here today is to uh, paint a picture for, for our community about what we're seeing with violent crime here in Davenport. And as your police chief, I understand the residents are naturally concerned about the current level of crime in our community. I am as well. Every police officer that works here in Davenport is equally as concerned. And I want to give the community a clear picture and understanding of the nature of crime in our community. 2020 was a violent year here in Davenport. And 2021 is keeping pace with last year. In 2020, shots fired incidents reached an all-time high of 279 in our city. As did non-fatal shootings, we had 47. That's 47 victims in our community of gun violence. And this is alarming and unacceptable. Not only has the frequency of shootings increased in our community, so has the magnitude of these events. Four shooting scenes involved multiple shooting victims last year. And at one homicide scene, we determined that there were 98 rounds fired by at least nine different weapons. So let me be clear on this. This violence is wholly unacceptable. And our residents are right to be frustrated, as are we, and concerned about this. However, we must be able to speak frankly about the reality of violence in our community. This violence is not random. 
Much of it is the result of retaliation between hybrid gangs in our community that have no regard for human life. They think nothing of murdering a 12 and 14 year old in broad daylight. These gangs would rather seek their own justice on the streets of Davenport than cooperate with authorities to see offenders brought to justice through our legal system. When our police officers respond to a scene, they often receive little to no cooperation from the victims involved. The victims then become the perpetrators as they seek their own justice and the cycle of violence continues. The unfortunate reality is that these gangs are comprised predominantly of minority youth and both the perpetrators and victims of the majority of the gun crime in Davenport have been young African-American males. Three African-American -Ameri African teenagers have been murdered in the last nine months on our streets as the result of this retaliatory violence between these feuding gangs, three of them. As a community, we should all collectively mourn the fact that this violence has become normalized and even accepted in some areas of our community. The police, our police officers, your police officers will continue to work diligently to bring these offenders to justice and make sure they are held accountable for their actions. However, our police department is not able to eradicate this violence on our own. That's the message today. Instead, we all must be willing to take an honest look at where we are as a community and where we stand in our community as individuals. And how can we work to prevent this violence from occurring in the first place? With that, I'll turn it back over to the mayor. Chief. All right, so folks, so as Chief Sikorsky mentioned, men and women of the police department working tirelessly to bring offenders of gun crime to justice. You've heard me say before, um, if you commit a, a crime or use a gun in commission of a crime here, we're going after you with everything we got. That still stands, okay, and they're doing that. Um, however, the police alone are not the solution, not the single solution for this problem. As a community, we must acknowledge that we, I'm pointing my finger at me, not at anybody else, we all have a responsibility in preventing gun crime from occurring in the first place. Without residents and community members and organizations taking a role in this, gun crime is probably going to continue. The city of Davenport recently committed a million dollars, thank you, <clears throat> to seed funding for our youth assessment program used to be called the JC, YC, Youth Assessment Program. The program will provide a coordinated, multi-agency, single-entry site that will contribute to the safety of youth, families, and community through early identification, intervention, comprehensive assessment, improved access, and navigation. That's coming. That's coming shortly. This program will be crucial in helping preventing youth from entering the juvenile justice system. But the Youth Assessment Program alone will not be sufficient to curb the rise in gun violence in our community. In addition to the youth assessment program, we need a holistic approach, one that works with our community partners on the front end to prevent the crime and prevent the youth in our community from turning to a life of crime, but also one that works with law enforcement partners to ensure that if someone chooses to commit gun crimes in our community, they will be held responsible. To this end, I'm announcing today the creation of a violent crime community task force. The task force will be comprised of community representatives from a wide variety of backgrounds, including city council members. Thank you to Alderman McGinnis and Alderman Jobson for being willing to be part of that. NAACP, LULAC, Danport Community Schools, Genesis, Vera French, St. Ambrose, Quad City Chamber, and a variety of others all have committed to me that they want to be part of this. They've all committed that they want to find a solution to this. And they're passionate about seeing community solutions to the violence in Danport. The, we will work together to understand the nature of the crime in our community and will be tasked with bringing recommendations forth for community-based solutions to curb the violence that has become too common. This isn't a get-together talk and have a nice day community discussion. 
This is what are we missing? What do we need to work on? What, are, what, what solutions do we find and what action can we do? I want to thank everybody in the community, all the residents of Davenport who understand that in order to make progress on this multifaceted problem, we must have a multifaceted response. While our police department is committed to being part of that response, and they are kicking ass on finding these folks, you heard the chief. We are not pulling punches here. Okay? We are going after these daggum criminals. Let me be clear. We are totally committed to getting these guys, or whoever they are. But we need a multifaceted approach. I look forward to the community becoming more engaged and finding solutions to lower crime, to lower crime, um, to make Davenport a safe, stable, and welcoming community. And with that, if you want to ask me some questions, I'm happy to take them. Or someone else. Is there a timeline on this? I'll, we'll have the first meeting here in a week or two, and then potentially a couple times, a couple times a month. You talk about all these different community organizations yep. getting involved with yep. this. How can people who may not be associated yep. with one get involved? You guys know my email. You know my phone number. I tell everybody my freaking cell phone number. If you don't have my cell phone number, I don't know who. You, I, that's confusing to me because I tell everybody in that building over there, give them my damn cell phone number, and I call you back that same day. So I will call you, communicate. I mean, these guys might want it too, but call me, tell me. And I'm having listening sessions, right? One's Thursday night at Eastern Library, and we're going to do one every month. Tell me what I don't know, tell me what I should hear, and be, you heard the chief say, be frank with us, okay? We're gonna be, we're gonna have frank discussions, and we're talking, you know, this is gonna be an action thing, all right? We're gonna get after them, but we're gonna find other solutions. Anybody else? Is it gonna be tough to get into these neighborhoods where the action is happening and get these people involved because all, yeah, these, sure. all these groups wanna step up, Right, but it's the ones that the chief go talk to. No, nope, no, nope. sure. I don't want to this talk this is afraid. tough. This is tough, right? I don't disagree, but I'm asking. Come on, help us out. We're meeting with other organizations. Um, there's a Danport Peace Group talking to them every week. Meet with them face to face. Um, we're talking with kids. We're talking with others. What 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 can you tell us? There's been a couple I've talked to lately, and it's. Again, pretty frank conversations, and I tell them, you have my attention. Tell me what we need to do, um, what we need to get after, how we need to approach something. And we're going to, youth will be part of this, probably not the first meeting, but youth in our community and people on the ground will be part of this. And how important is that youth component? I know you mentioned that, you know, three teenagers have been killed yeah. just the past nine, nine months alone. Well, that's a tragedy, right? So um, hearing from all voices. I don't care who you are, but the youth, they're, they're, they're out there dealing with this, right? 12-year-olds, 14-year-olds coming out of school, coming out of their intermediate school, um, on their bike, you know, things like that. I, I hear from some of them, I need to hear from more, and so do we. And I, and, and I, I, I talk to kids, I keep, I'm going to keep going a little bit, sorry. Um, sometimes it's like little kids or old people, right? They're gonna tell you straight what they think, right? They don't. They got okay. Didn't think of that. Um, might not like the frankness of it, but we're gonna have that and let. Tell me, right? Yeah, sorry, ma'am. No, go ahead. Um, did you? Can you elaborate a bit on how you plan to include the youth in the task force? We'll probably bring specific we'll, members of the force who are youth, or are you just gonna have them? The first meeting, no. But after that, we've already developing names. We're already yeah. developing kids in our schools that we're gonna talk to that people have recommended that we talk to and be part of this. We're already doing that. And you said timeline next week and that I imagine includes yeah. the, the YEC uh, as well. The, the for getting going? Yes. July. July. I think July. Okay. Yeah. For the YEC to be going? Yep. Yep. We're already, we're, all, we're, we're full in there. Before That's one I, piece. Before the input or data, are you looking on these groups like the NAACP and you'd like to bring the task force? They have a, Everybody brings a unique perspective from their personal experiences or their organization or where they live or what they do or whatever. I bring an experience that's very different. Us four standing here bring a different experience and they, they are critical to uh, helping us understand and, and how to approach it. Everybody that, we're, that wants to talk, I, there's no, I don't want to hear what you have to, I want to hear what you have to say and how can we 
do it. And if we're saying, let's think about this, and someone says, no, we should look at this, let, come on. Um, we're at the end of, well, maybe not, maybe, no, we're hearing everything, and we're wanting everybody to be part of this. No? Anybody else? Uh, yes, ma'am. The numbers that you brought up, uh, 279 shots fired, do you have any data for how many of those were juvenile versus? Juvenile? Not with me right now, no. Too many. Definitely. One's too many. Anybody else? Thank you for passing this word, and we're getting after it. Thanks, Thanks folks. I just think I have those. Mm -hmm. Thanks.